Sand. Did you honestly mean to take an ancient and withered power like this and turn it against me? You are a foolish traitor, Midna. Why do you defy your king? My king? You who do nothing but abuse the magic of your tribe? You must be joking. How dare you? Are you implying that my power is our old magic? Now that is a joke. This power is granted to me by my god. It is the magic of the King of Twilight, and you will respect it. My Midna, did you forget? That beast is one of the Light Dwellers who oppressed our people. No matter how much you may desire otherwise, you will never be more than a shadow in their world. You cannot consort with their kind. But if we can make their world ours, Midna, light and darkness will meet at last. Our tribe will take back their realm, and sweet darkness will blot out this harsh light. And that, Midna, is why. I need you. Not just for me, but for all of our people. Lend me your power. So be it. I will return you to the light world you covet. Doctor, hero chosen by the goddesses. Go to the princess locked away in the castle. That princess holds the key that can unlock you from your shadow form. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess with me, the Doctor. In the last episode, we defeated the uh, Morfiel, the boss of the Lakebed Temple, and we were confronted by Zant in one of my favourite cutscenes in the game, which I'll hopefully talk about over the course of this episode. Now, as you can see, we've been returned to the World of Light forcibly. Well, Midna has been, certainly. We're stuck in wolf mode. Midna is on her back dying. We've been told to go to the castle and seek out Princess Zelda. So I will see you in Hyrule Castle Town. So, this, as you can see, interestingly, this music and the rain continues walk between Hyrule Castle Town, and there's a cat that's run up to us, so let's talk to it, because we can do that when we're all full. I just hate the rain. I can't get comfortable whether I sit or stand. Maybe my sixth sense is trying to tell me something. That was not the cat I was looking for. This cat is the slightly smaller one. Eek, that thing on your back, is it all right? That Zora kid came through here looking as bad as that. Why don't you take this one to Telma's bar too? Hint, hint, hint. Yes, that's just in case you couldn't tell where we're going. That's where we're heading. Telma's bar. See you there.
So when we get here, it is as simple as entering the bar. Beast, get out! Ha, no it's not. Hmm, what should we do now? You there. Your doctor, correct? Hmm, yes, I thought so. I could just tell, you know. I'm Louise. Do you remember me being in, ah? Do you remember meeting me in the shop before? Though I don't think we were properly introduced. In any case, I must tell you, I'm a bit puzzled as to why you look like that. Really, dear, you can't blame the humans for tossing you out the way you look. Oh, another patient? You certainly are a curious sort. Please, please. Princess, Zelda. This way. Here, get in through the window. The attic is connected to the castle's waterway. It's an old waterway though, so it could be a rough trip. Well, I suppose all that's left to do is make sure the humans don't notice you. So, we've got a bit of a plan. We've been told this actually earlier by Telmo, is that we, the, um, the, there's a secret passage in her bar that leads to Hyrule Castle. Just in case, we might ever need it. Oh, look at that. We need it. Let's head inside. So as you can see, we're kind of above the bar, and that's where we're going. Don't make too much noise here. Um, Specifically, what you want to avoid doing is breaking any pots. If you knock any pots down below, then it alerts them to you up here and you get the whole beast get out thing and you just have to do it again. It's very unexciting. Oh, I accidentally listened into something and it's not an interesting conversation, so I'll just skip that. Um, yeah, as well, I'm fairly sure... Well, we'll head through here first. Now, we've actually seen a couple of these before, and I have pointed them out, but these floating lanterns, have a look at them with your sensors. They're actually a ghost! So if you attack it, and attack it again, and then finish him! And you brutally rip out its heart, and you've got the pose soul. Collect one from each pose you defeat. Indeed. You'll notice the new part of the visualizer has opened up, because there's a lot of pose souls you can gather around the game. What do they do, and what are they exactly? Well, let's ask this golden motherfucker. Oh, thanks for beating the ghost. Can I call you Doggy? I'm Giovanni. I became consumed by greed long ago and sold my soul to a dark creature that did this to me. I can't move. I can't go see my girlfriend. My pet cat Gengel is frozen on my head. I don't think I could be more miserable. I have to ask you a favor, Doggy. Can you find the t defeat the 20 ghosts that lurk in the dark for me? I think if you can free the pieces of my soul from the ghosts that hold them, I'll be free. Oh, but it's raining out now, so I don't think you can go outside directly. I'll open the door to the underground waterway for you. Once the rain stops, you can come back in here by digging around the front wall where the cats gather. Understand, doggy? So, side quest activated. We'll be dealing with that in a few episodes' time, to say the least. And here we go into the underground waterway. So, you may recognise this section, we're not actually at a part that we should recognise yet, but obviously it's the sewers that we experienced when we first came to Twilight, where we first met Midda. So, yeah, a bit kind of, a bit of a flashback to them. No, what I was going to say is that, so the barkeeper is called Telma and her cat is called Louise. Telma and Louise, kind of sounds like Thelma and Louise, which is a film thing, I think. I actually don't know what it is. Um, that's very embarrassing for me. I'll look it up and put it on the screen. Anyway, yes. Um, those things, Skull Tailors, slightly difficult, well, it's not slightly different to fight in wolf mode. You just gotta wait until their guard is down and then wallop them. Um, and this whole part of the puzzle that we're on, well, part of the, um, at the moment is basically to do with gathering fire. I said part of the at the moment there and I realised I did not actually finish what I was meaning to say. Um, yeah, yes, this entire section that we're on here is really about just carrying fire around. Uh, so we need to get up here. 
which I believe he actually, yeah, that guy. Basically, you need to get up there and the game literally stops you from doing that until you've defeated the wolves. The wolves? I'm the wolves. Uh, defeated the bats. Man, I am struggling with the words today. Um, it's annoying that it's a, yeah, like, you can hold A to run when you are wolf, except you can't do that when you're carrying something, so it feels like you're walking really slowly. I don't know if that's just me. Oh, go away, batty. That's not a bat. Um, that's, well, it is a bat. It's a keese. It's not batty. Batty is a character in an extremely obscure film from the 90s called Fern Gully. Uh, if anyone's watched that in the audience, um, I will be impressed. It's it's Robin Williams at his finest. Um, but I'm talking shit again for a change. Let's hit a bold blend. I'm just going to leave him there to die. Um, because, of course, I haven't talked about this yet, but with Midna in the state that she's currently in on your back, you actually... Oh, let's dig through here. What I was going to say with, is with Midna in the state she's in, you actually can't use the Dark Aura at all. Um, so that tactic is not available to you, therefore killing Bulbins is a bit more annoying. But this one I'm fighting here, kill him. Really make sure he dies, because basically this section here will get extremely annoying if there are Bulbins alive, because the Bulbins have a tendency to shoot fire arrows at you while you're trying to traverse across narrow ropes. Whoop! I just... Nope! Oh, I, do, I knew I'd pause that up. Let's try that again. Whoa! There we go, that was much better. Unnecessary, I really should have just waited till I was back on the platform, but still. Um, yeah, also I want to point out this point. The music, you'll notice this kind of like is not changing based on the area where it's just constantly going. It's a great bit of music, one of my favorite pieces in the game, and one of a lot of people, as I understand it, favorite in the game. It's called either Midna's Desperate Hour or Midna's Desperation, depending on whom you believe. And it's, yeah, it's only played in kind of this scene during the game when Midna's kind of dying. And this music combined with like the rainstorm that's kind of constantly going on during this part of the game is, oh, it's a lovely bit of atmospheric, um, ness. Uh, oh, dick sucker. Oh, wow, you can just jump those. Oh, no, you can't. That's a lie. Oh, uh, dear me. I'm not very good at this game. Oh, that door's open. That's excellent. I just want to talk about, take this opportunity to talk about as well, um, the last cutscene we had at the end of the last episode where Xander appears. That is one of my favourite cutscenes in the game, partly because, well, obviously it follows the standard Zelda format of gain three things, try and take on the baddie, lose horrifically, then go and gather some more things. Uh, and we're currently in the second phase of that, the gather more, th well, we will be soon. But, that scene is really cool, much like its equivalent in Wind Waker when you fa face Ganondorf in the Forsaken Fortress. Facing down Zant there is awesome because of the character development it does for Zant. Of basically, Zant you've heard about, you've seen what he did from literally that first opening cutscene and you've been kind of experiencing what he's been doing the whole time. But just have that scene when you spent ages getting these three few shadows and he just takes them off you with that, like, I, I, it's, I love the way he appears behind you and that makes that freaky scream he makes. And just basically defeats you and Midna just without even breaking a sweat, takes the things that you've been gathering from you and just fucks you in the butthole. It's it's fantastic. It's a, such a well done scene, um, and I really like it, uh, which is kind of a shame considering a lot of us... I, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm spoiling things. Uh, let's head through here. Please, please tell me, how do we break the curse on this one? This is the one. You need him to save your world. That's why. Princess, please, you must help the doctor. What binds him is a different magic than what transformed him when he first passed the Curtain of Twilight. It is an evil power. Our world is one of balance. Just as there is light to drive away darkness, so too is there benevolence to banish evil. Head for the sacred grove that lies deep within the lands guarded by the spirit Pharaon. There you will find the blade of evil's bane that was crafted by the wisdom of the ancient sages, the Master Sword. The Master Sword is a sacred blade that evil can never touch. Evil cloaks you like a dark veil, and the bla that blade is the only thing that can cleave it. Doctor, hero sent by the goddesses. 
Like you, I have been granted special powers by the goddesses. Fine. Doctor, you can... you can get to the woods on your own, right? Princess, I have one last request. Can you tell him where to find the Mirror of Twilight? Midna, I believe I understand now just who and what you are. Despite your mortal injuries, you act in our stead. These dark times are the result of other result of our deeds, yet it is you who have reaped the penalty. Accept this now, Midna. I pass it to you. No! Doctor! Stop her! We go back, Doctor. Back to Farron Woods. Zelda, I've taken all that you had to give, though I did not want it.